protect them and keep them safe from harm. Bless this council, our city manager, as we labor in the calling of public service. Give us wisdom, compassion, and love as we serve your people and let all we do glorify you. These and all other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thanks very much. The clerk will call the roll, please. <coughs> Ms. Green? Here. Mr. Protogiro? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagle? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Will the clerk please read the resolution for the closed meeting? A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Green. Aye. Mr. Protogiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here. Thanks for coming down. For the benefit of those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, the first thing which we'll do is we're going to have one brief ceremonial matter. At the conclusion of that, we'll move to uh, the regular agenda, well, the, uh, our normal agenda, which is we have a number of uh, public hearings. We'll take them first, and then we'll move directly to the consent agenda, and then we move to the uh, regular agenda. Um, and we'll vote on all of those matters in just the way they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of, uh, of the formal agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the council on a non-agenda item, that's something that's not on our printed docket. You'll be given that opportunity. But you have, um, in order to have your name called, you must have uh, signed a slip of paper which the clerk has made available in the lobby behind the council chambers before the meeting began. And seven or eight of you have elected to do that. Um, the ceremonial matter uh, involves foster care uh, month. And Steve, would you, Mr. Hawks, would you like to come up? I see Jan with you or bring in any, anybody that bring. I uh, see so we have some guests. We'd love to hear from them as well. Good evening. Hi, Steve. Thank you. Thanks for coming down. And Jan has the, the camera. Or the, okay. And I'll read the, rock, the proclamation, and we'd love to hear from you. It reads, whereas the family, serving as the primary source of love, identity, self-esteem, and support, is the very foundation of our communities and our commonwealth, and whereas in the city of Norfolk there are 253 children and youth in foster care being provided with a safe, secure, and stable home along with the compassion and nurture of a foster family. And whereas all young people in foster care need a meaningful connection to a caring adult who becomes a supportive and lasting presence in their lives. And whereas foster kinship and adoptive families who often who open their homes and hearts and support children whose families are in a crisis play a vital role in helping children and families heal and reconnect, thereby launching young people into, into successful adulthood. And whereas dedicated foster families frequently adopt foster children, resulting in a greater need for more foster families. And whereas we are thankful for the numerous individuals and organizations for their valuable contribution to increasing public awareness of the needs of children in and leaving foster care, as well as the enduring steadfast devotion of foster parents and those working in the public foster care system. Now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, to hereby proclaim May 2014 as Foster Care Month in the City of Norfolk and encourage all citizens to get involved through foster care, volunteering, or mentoring to change the life of a child, and also urge citizens to recognize the commitment of our foster families as they lend their strength to our most vulnerable children and their efforts to help these young people realize their full potential. Given under my hand this 13th day of May 2014, and Steve, let me give this to you, 2014, rather. Thank you very much for bringing this important issue to our attention one more time, okay? And we'd love to hear from you, okay? You may still be mayor. Mayor Frame, members of council, uh, I do have several members of our staff that work in the various aspects of foster care with us this evening. We have Gary Cofield, our program manager, Dina Powell Brickhouse, our supervisor, and also Sheila Cross and Shatara Johnson are with us this evening. 
we do appreciate so much that you take the time out of your busy agenda to pass a resolution and to recognize issues such as foster care. Uh, in the resolution, you heard the wording. There are 253 children that are in the foster care system here in Norfolk. Yeah. That's very disruptive to their lives. For whatever reason, they are not living in their biological home and we have care for them. We need quality foster homes that will help provide stability for the children, hopefully help get them back to their biological family, mm -hmm. but as mentioned, sometimes to become the adoptive permanent homes. So our commercial is, and this is for the camera, hopefully it will get it, please become a foster parent. We need quality foster homes. And thank you so much for the time and recognition. Okay, thank you, Steve. That's an important matter for us. Thank you all for coming down. Okay, that concludes the ceremonial matters, and then we'll move directly to the public hearings, please. Public hearing number one. Public hearing one scheduled for this day on the application of the City of Norfolk for the closing, vacating, and discontinuing of a portion of the western side of Atlantic Street south of Waterside Drive. And the Planning Commission re recommends approval by 7-0 vote. Okay, there are, no, there are no members of the public signed up to address the council on this matter. If there are no questions, you can call the roll. Please. I have an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing a portion of the western side of Atlantic Street south of Waterside Drive and authorizing the conveyance to the abutting property owner, Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority, of any interest the city may have in the underlying fee of said portion of Atlantic Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. Public hearing two. Public hearing two is scheduled for this day under state law on the application of the City Planning Commission to amend the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992, Section 11-2, Chesapeake Bay Preservation Area Overlay District and Chapter 26 Site Plan Review to comply with state stormwater management regulations. Planning Commission recommends approval by 6-0 vote. Um, okay, you can call the roll, please. I have an ordinance to amend... Wait a minute. Oh, Ellis, I'm sorry. Public hearing. There you are, Ellis, PH2. I would have known he was going to come that way. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Members of the council, <laughs> Mr. Jones. I'm Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Ken Lake Place here in the great city of Norfolk. Um, I wanted to rise in support of this. As you may recall, Mr. Mayor, some years ago, I did drive all the way to Fredericksburg to express concern about the IDA mm -hmm. and found to my surprise and pleasant surprise, um, I found that several of the commissioners of the hearing at that time uh, agreed with my concerns about so much of Norfolk becoming declared IDA. Um, it strikes me that this is now going to move in the right direction, and I had checked just previously early this evening to double check and make sure that there was no implication or problem that would arise from the overlay. And I'm satisfied after listening to Mr. Homewood and Lenny, Lenny and so on that uh, we're in good shape, and I right. very much want to support this. Thank you. Thank you, Ellis. Okay, you can call the roll, please. I have an ordinance to amend and reordain certain portions of Section 11-2 and Chapter 26 of the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992 so as to accommodate changes to the city's stormwater management regulations as required by state law. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, public hearing three. Public hearing three is scheduled for this day under state law to hear comments approving a lease agreement with SBA 2012 TC Assets LLC for a parcel of land at 1311 Bayville Street in the city of Norfolk. You can call the roll. I have an ordinance approving a lease agreement with SBA 2012 TC Assets LLC for a parcel of land at 1311 Bayville Street in the city of Norfolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four. Public hearing four is scheduled for this day under state law to hear comments approving a lease agreement with Soraya LLC doing business as Ocean View Water Slide for a portion of Community Beach, a property in the city of Norfolk. Okay. Uh, we have uh, four speakers here to uh, 
really answer questions if any of us have any. That would be uh, the distinguished attorney Bobby Hallett is here, Judd, Jeff Hallett, Richard Katz, and they brought Christopher Hagen with them as well. So Who knew? any questions for any of this group here? <laughs> so. No, I don't know that. Really I, is, I, we would. It is <laughs> a crew, though. That's what you yeah. We don't. We, is that I think we're prepared to vote unless you really have something. You want to ask. Okay, sorry, you can call. Cole. I have an ordinance approving a lease agreement with Soraya LLC doing business as Ocean View Water Slide for a portion of Community Beach, yeah. a property in the City of Norfolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green. Aye. Mr. Protoziru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. I just want to say I, I'm excited about the new entertainment and opportunities this may bring to that section, and I, I hope it's very successful. I, Dr. Wibley? I have to say it's the first time in my career that my son has cared what my vote was. <laughs> 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 I thought something was up. Now I see totally what was up. <laughs> Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. <coughs> Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay, thank you. All right, guys. Public hearing five, please. Public hearing five scheduled for this day under state law to hear comments on the non-proprietary portions of the proposals submitted in response to the City of Norfolk's and Norfolk Public Schools request for proposals pursuant to the Public Private Education Facilities and Infrastructure Act of 2002 to provide design, permitting, development, and construction services in connection with, con with the construction of five schools. Um, there are, I think, five or six folks who have signed up to address the council. Uh, when I call your name, if you come to the podium, please identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name, present home address, and then limit your remarks, please, to uh, three minutes. Mark Perot. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. My name is Mark Perot. I live at 950 Hanover Avenue in Norfolk. I, uh, I've spoken before council recently regarding historic Larchmont and Ocean View elementaries. I think of the schools that are being addressed by the PPEA. These are clearly the two that have the most uh, significant historic character. And I think we all in Norfolk do best when we manage to preserve our historic character when we rebuild something. I think we all understand how well the Slover Library has done in that the uh, Magnet School on Granby Street, and we see the uh, success of downtown and some, in many of our historic neighborhoods because of the historic character that has been retained while moving into the 21st century. Uh, I understand from attending the informal session that the first step, uh, if this ordinance is approved, is there will be some public workshops on Larchmont and Ocean View and other schools at which conceptual site plans and floor plans will be presented. And I have to assume from what I heard that these conceptual site plans and floor plans will only be for a new, entirely new construction and will not show the option. Maybe I'm, I'd love to be corrected on this, but that there will not be a conceptual site plan or floor plan for a renovated uh, large or ocean view presented at these workshops and that being the case I do not see how we can possibly expect any kind of fair uh, fair hearing for the renovation option uh, in particular I, I hope that this still can be done because I would point out particularly with Larchmont if we renovate the most historic part of it we're, we're only renovating about 30 percent or so of the existing school most of the school majority of the school was built in the 50s and 70s, has no particular historic character mm -hmm. and should be replaced in any event. Um, I think we ought to, uh, you know, we apply ourselves and try to figure out a way. The mayor referred this morning to saving the bell at the uh, Ocean View Elementary School. I think that sentiment is well taken and I think we ought to build on that and try to come up with plans that take the best of the old schools, retain it in a new rebuilt school and achieve a win-win, which is what we, when we apply ourselves in Norfolk, it's when we have our greatest success and, and bring the community together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Susan Schrader. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. I 
am Susan Schrader, and I live at 1766 Farragut Avenue. Our city and our school children deserve a quality school building with character that inspires learning. Modernization and expansion of historic Larchmont and Ocean View elementary schools will give the students and citizens what they need and deserve. Regardless of the private public partner you choose, you must insist if they don't already have on their teams anyone with expertise in renovation of historic buildings that they acquire the services of someone with that expertise. I recently returned from my 50th high school reunion in Atlanta and um, our school is still there. It was built in 1920 and it has been renovated, enlarged, and modernized. And it is a source of pride for all who have attended and are attending it. It now has a new name, but it's still, it's still there and it's even better. And it's also an asset to Atlanta. It was in two modern day films. It was in um, Parental Guidance with Billy Crystal and Bette Midler. And it was in The Blind Side with Sandra Bullock. The renovation of historic Larchmont and Ocean View will be a source of pride for all who t attend it and a source of pride for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Alice Allen Grimes. My name is Alice Allen Grimes, and I live at 1322 Mallory Court. I am here on behalf of the Norfolk Preservation Alliance. As you know, in 2008, the city's consultants recommended renovation and expansion of Larchmont and Ocean View Elementary Schools after considering costs and the structural condition of the buildings. The experts did not recommend demolition and replacement of these two schools, and their recommendations were later confirmed by a citizen task force. You are now undertaking an effort to upgrade these two schools along with three others. You should follow the recommendations of the experts hired to assess our school buildings and the citizen task force who evaluated their work. Larchmont School is a striking collegiate design building that lends an impressive character to Hampson Boulevard and serves as a gateway to ODU surrounding neighborhoods in the Naval Base. The historic front portion of the school could be readily renovated with a new addition to the rear and the impressive trees in front of the school could be retained. Ocean View Elementary is the largest and best example of Art Deco architecture in the city of Norfolk. The enormous tile mural on the front of the school is irreplaceable. The auditoriums of both schools could be retained and renovated for future generations rather than delegating school programs to a cafeteria with a low fold-out stage. Both of these buildings are eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. Regardless of the po private public team you select, you must require them from the get-go to renovate these impressive buildings. They can be fully equipped and modernized, and you will fulfill your objective of providing new schools. If there are any parents or others who have any doubts that a renovated historic school is a new school, just take them on a tour of Bayview Elementary, Blair Middle, or Granby High School. These well-renovated historic schools offer the same technology, bathrooms, cafeterias, and classrooms of any other new school, but in a much more solid structure. You can take any naysayers to some of our newer schools and show them the leaks and the cracks and the foundation that in some cases appeared less than a year after construction. The use of historic tax credits can substantially reduce the cost of a project, and the city has used tax credits on other projects and knows how to do it. To a large extent, life in our neighborhoods is centered around our public schools. Removing important school buildings that are so deeply woven into the fabric of our communities can only hurt the surrounding neighborhoods. Modernizing and expanding these wonderful historic schools can be a real gift to the neighborhoods and to the city as a whole. When you conduct your community meetings, you must present generalized site plans only that allow for changes based on public input. It is not an open public process if you present a preordained footprint. If you are going to say you are conducting a public input process, then you should actually do so. Thank you. Joe Austin. Joe Austin, 215 Brook Avenue. 
Downstairs, there's the DMV. There's a DMV all across the. Well, first of all, by the way, big ups, Mr. Jones. I'm getting your kid pronouncing. Congratulations, you deserve it, every inch of it. There's a DMV downstairs, DMV across town. It stands for Department of Motor Vehicles. But this is the DMV that the donors money voted. This uh, developer gave Mr. Frame $5,000 over the past two years. Mr. Frame gives Mr. Riddick $3,000. Mr. Wynn gave Mr. Riddick $200. Mr. Portagero gave, his uh, soldier gave $250. It's all connected. It's all connected. And I'm against this because the way it was done. Now, you've got a school that's been sitting there for a whole year. Now, Dr. Webb did tell me if I'm wrong. Was Taylor treated like this? No. Mr. Frame, was uh, Blair treated like this for the school open, closed for a year? No. Was uh, Crossroads treated like this? No. But Carousel is. <laughs> you got a council person who hits for the homeboys and catches for the other team, and when you play baseball, when you catch the ball, you always throw it around and get back to the pitcher. You know what the pitcher is? Mayor Frame. He calls balls and strikes. And some of y'all play right along with it. Now, I'm not against somebody building a school. It should have been done. But the disrespect for the South Side, some of the poorest people in this city, again, and it wouldn't happen at Taylor, Blair, or Crossroads. Never would have happened. So why are you relishing your victories and all that kind of stuff? Relishing right and wrong. But you can go swimming on the South Side with that big many black statues in front of it. That's a wonderful thing. But the kids deserve the same thing Taylor got. And they're not. And it's a disgrace that it's happened. So with all the scared of cat preachers and all, well, yes, I said it, and I'm going to say it again. All the scared of cat preachers that was down here with the tax uh, assessments and all that stuff, where they at tonight? Where are you? So I know I might get some flack on that, but so what? Uh, my father, Columbus Joe Austin Jr., always told me when I had this little rant like I'm having now, and I finished talking, he said, you done? And I said, yeah, I'm done. You tell me, you're not responsible for what they do. You're responsible for what you do. And if my little three minutes I got up here, not 34 years like you have and 22 years like you have, I got three minutes to let you know how disgusted I am, how these people treat it. And it ain't right. So yes, he's going to get the, the bid. You already decided. All 13 says it's going to go to the gentleman's name who Mr. Uh, uh, Dodge is going to name. So um, as you call your roll call out, you all going to say, I, I'm calling my roll call out now. I'm going to revise and extend my remarks. I'm going to free the ordinance and adopt. Joe Austin, because of what has happened, votes no. Dan Montague. Right. Dan Montague, 4605 Crick Street here in the city of Norfolk. Good evening, everyone. This right here, like my mother taught me when I was a little boy, when it sounds too good to be true, it is. This, in my estimation, and I'll be 75 in November, is the first stage of the public schools going private. Back uh, in, in the Bush administration, they all got educated real good, and when they became governors of these different states, they started selling all the public stuff that they could sell. If we enter into this agreement, you can kiss the public schools in Norfolk goodbye. I probably won't see it, but I guarantee you, you will. <laughs> and you will. And the thing about it is, you know, uh, Ballard has got to make money. The city doesn't. All they got to do is just pay their bills, but Ballard has got to make money. And if they don't make money, then they're out of business. And so therefore, I am totally against this, and I want to see it go down like a hot air balloon on a bad day. Thank you. Richard Levin. Is Richard here? OK, that's all the, the slips I have of someone, of anyone who signed up to speak on this. So unless there are any comments, you can call the roll. The motion on this, Mr. President, is, Just to close the public. is to close the public hearing. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiri? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. 
Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. R1. R1 is an ordinance to amend and reordain the Norfolk City Code by adding one new chapter, 41.2, entitled Virginia Stormwater Management Program, so as to adopt the Stormwater Design and Construction Manual. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2? An ordinance granting a special exception to Evan Eva's LLC authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment known as Eva's on property located at 4314 Collie Avenue. The Planning Commission recommends approval by 5-0 vote. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Uh, this is the first of a couple of ordinances we have, and Highland Park has come to me talking about how many special exceptions are coming to them. This is very exciting. This is called NOCO, Nor North Collie. Right. You know that, that's the name of this yeah. area, and it's really exciting to see it respond to our upper um, uh, Hampton Boulevard corridor study. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited that these groups are coming in. Thank you. Um, aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3. An ordinance granting a special exception to Tiffany Kidwell Gaylord and David Pletick, authorizing the operation of an eating and drinking establishment known as Saint Germain on property located at 913 West 21st Street. By 5 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4 and 4A, can you do that? Yes, sir. R4 uh, is an ordinance granting a special exception to Kogan's Pizza LLC, authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment known as Kogan's Pizza on property located at 4311 Collie Avenue, Suite B. For both items, Planning Commission recommends approval by 5-0 vote. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance. Mr. Katz is here to answer any questions. Richard is, if anybody. Okay. For reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. Let me get 4A, Mr. President, which okay. is an ordinance granting a special exception to Kogan's Pizza LLC authorizing the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption at an establishment known as Kogan's Pizza on the property located at 4311 Collie Avenue, Suite B. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance granting a special exception to Tidewater Seafood LLC authorizing the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption at an establishment known as Tidewater Seafood on property located at 7483 Tidewater Drive by 5-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Just a second. Uh, Rick Henn? Is Rick here? Rick is here to answer any questions if anybody has any. And then Alton Robinson. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor Frame, Council. My name is Alton Robinson. My address is 735 West 35th Street. Actually, um, I uh, intended to sign up for PH5, but I made an error, and I say R5, so it's not uh, her fault. It's my fault. Okay. So I take that, that blame. But being that it is a, an agenda item I signed up for and I have three minutes, I figure I utilize them. Um, no, this has to be on the top. This should be on the topic. I'm going to okay. speak on the topic. Okay, good. And the topic is tied with seafood. Good. And being as mentioned in seafood, I'm going to talk about seafood and alcohol because alcohol makes you drunk. And when one is drunk, their decision is persuaded by the alcohol. And oftentimes, money works like alcohol. Money persuades people's decision. And when money persuades people's decisions, it opens up an avenue where someone could possibly view corruption. And corruption, like old seafood, stinks. If you leave seafood in a garbage can, it begins to stink. So that's when you have corruption. Corruption is like seafood, and seafood stinks. Alcohol persuades people's decisions. 
just like money, and we all know the story. We've been listening to it, and we've been hearing it. We've been hearing about people that's been making campaign donations to people who've been winning campaigns, and then weeks later, they on the agenda to do certain things in our city. We have a wealthy city, and um, the decision to distribute the wealth of our city should not be uh, made by alcohol. Oh, I mean money. Either way, it persuades decisions. When you're drunk, you make wrong decisions. When people give you a lot of money, sometimes, often, you make wrong decisions based on the amount of money that they give you. And that is corruption. So that's all I have to say on this uh, agenda item. And for the seafood place, oh, I'm for it. Thank you. All right, you can call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. <clears throat> Pardon me, Ms. Green. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance to repeal four subsections of Section 25-653 and one subsection of Section 25-654 and to amend and reordain Sections 25-652, 653, 654, 656, and 660 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add one new one-way street, one new yield intersection, 10 new stop intersections, two new vehicles over five tons prohibitions, and three new automated traffic signals. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Green. Aye. Mr. Protegiro? No. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? You know, I was looking at this over the weekend and I was trying to figure out um, why it's necessary to put so many stop signs in some neighborhoods. I was particularly interested in um, Grove Avenue area. It, it's a neighborhood road. I, I, don't for, I don't see that much traffic <laughs> going there, but I think we're adding six stop signs along that route. But uh, a couple weeks ago, I asked um, for the intersection of Portal um, in Broadfield to be addressed with speeding, and I don't see that on here, but that, that road seems to get more speeders. In fact, there's a group of neighbors that have gotten together and have been asking the city to do something about that area. But I'm, I'm just wondering if sometimes when these come up, maybe we need an explanation. Is this because there's one citizen that complains about speeding on the road and then all of a sudden we go out there and we say, oh, we're going to put stop signs up to fix this, but then we end up having to repeal them later because then everybody else in the neighborhood comes out and complains about all the new stop signs that have appeared. Um, I understand there's certain places for it, like, you know, we, we talked about Pythian and Old Ocean View, where you, you have people who will divert off of Chesapeake Boulevard and speed down those roads. But some of these, there's these small neighborhoods. I just, I don't see why we're doing this. Maybe that's why Andy voted no. I don't know. It's exactly the reason that you've said. I just, and people, unless. Yeah, anyway. I, Invariably, these are requested by the community when we put stops we in that. neighborhoods. We always hear that. And it, and it is checked with the community and with the Civic League. It's not something that it's not the uh, we thought up. Yes, sir, it's it is. exactly what Tom said. Okay. I mean, unless you get it from the Civic League, then I agree. And the Civic League comes and they make the request. But what happens is, and it happened in my neighborhood, and it's exactly what Tommy says. One person makes a complaint. We run out there with a stop sign, and then the next thing you know, there's stop signs. This is an old city. These streets have been there for a long time. And we're saying all of a sudden we need to put stop signs everywhere. And it comes out of nowhere. And I tend to agree with Tommy on this, and that's why every time these come up, because I have lived it, it's a no. So unless we can come up with a better way of telling us that you have a letter from the Civic League or they're making complaints and it's not just some individual, you will always have a no vote from me. Yes, sir. We'll provide information on the All right. ground for these. Tommy, did you vote? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm troubled by this, this Grove Avenue. Um, I just walked over there. I was knocking doors. I maybe saw five cars go down that road the time I was there. I just don't see the need for all those stop signs. But like I said, on Portal, there is a need because there are speed, the way the road curves, I'm just, maybe it's being addressed, I don't know. Um, but I, I can't support this, no. Okay. 
Dr. Wibley? Well, if there's confusion on council, which there appears to be, it seems to me we ought to be able to have a resolution on that. I mean, in the past, it's been that there have been civic leagues that um, ask for uh, stop signs, and then that's brought up. So I think instead of just having a no or a yes vote, we ought to just have it presented to us. I mean, do you want to delay this or vote or? You know, we typically Or do you want to just stuff. go ahead with this vote and then go forward with a different way to present this to council? I mean, because typically to... this is not presented to us the week before like we do with other votes. So council members don't know what kind of citizen input has happened. Am I correct? Am I correct? Right. So what, that seems like a pretty simple fix. I was, well, told, you, I was told, I'm sorry, Paul, I apologize. No, go, go ahead. But I, I guess instead of, let's just, instead of just voting no be, on principle, which I get, let's fix it and not just, make um, yeah, make let's, you know, let's yeah. change the process if people are unhappy with well, it. The last time this came up, I voted no also, and Barkley said, what are you doing voting no on a stop sign? Right, but now that you've clarified yeah. why you right. vote no, so let's change the process so you can be informed and your vote isn't just on principle, Actually, it's on I mean, data. I the last one because um, Ellis... Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to delay this for a week yeah. so you can get the information and maybe we'll break it into... It just makes sense to me that we don't... That you can't support. Well, I mean, don't I, do votes on principle. Okay. We don't do votes on data. And if the data demonstrates that two people want the stupid stop sign in their four cars, fine. We know about it. But if it shows us something else, then we can make the vote there's, based there's, on data. There's explanation under each one. And, right. and you can even see it's the Grove area. It says we're initiated by Bayview area residents. Right, but now um, what we need... The next line says the Northview Boulevard at Seafair intersection was requested by Harbor Walk area residents, and then the next one says the East Beach Civic League, but there is no East Beach Civic League. But, I mean, but that's, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. let's clarify the <laughs> to be a way. so you but feel comfortable. This, this stuff comes out on Fridays, right? Yeah. Right. There ought to be a way by this time before we get to vote that you bring it to somebody's attention before we get up here. And, but let's, why don't we continue this for a week? And then we'll uh, we'll try to sort it out between now and next week. And it'll be it's a simple right. change for okay. the clarification in either written form or the meeting before, don't you think? Uh, it easy. I mean, it's it's, it's it should simple, be easy. But then you're going to start. I think there should be a process, though. I mean, I agree. With that's what I'm saying. That's the change. I mean, but that's still not going to. I think I don't know if that's going to resolve these particular requests because I know in some of the neighborhoods that you know, that I have, we've asked for stop signs or yield signs in Broad Park and, and, and some in, in, I think, in Huntersville, and we've heard, um, you know, traffic doesn't warrant it, this and that. And the, I mean, it, it, it just, so how do we get, how does some neighborhoods get a why, stop why sign and an some neighborhoods item, traffic okay? doesn't, I don't understand. Well, well, you know, so. well, I mean, we have professionals that go out and evaluate these intersections. I don't think every time somebody calls and asks for a stop sign, they run out and put a stop sign. They, well, study. they, they do in Lock Haven. <laughs> oh, yes, they that. do. Well, yeah. they don't in Barrar okay. Park. <laughs> okay. Well, what we're going to do is we'll have it on the agenda next week. Okay. It's not like anybody stops, stops at them stops anyway. I mean, go put them up. Well, at least they can slow down. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Wait, wait a second. Wait a minute. Hold on. Whoa. Okay. I will. Um, the motion is to continue for one week, please. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Green. Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Thank you. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Our seven. An ordinance accepting $170,586 from the Virginia Department of Health Office of Emergency Medical Services for the Four for Life program and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of $170,586 for the program to be used for medical training purposes and to purchase emergency medical equipment. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. An ordinance approving an addendum to lease between 7460 Tidewater Drive Associates LLC in the City of Norfolk and authorizing the execution of the addendum to lease on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R9. An ordinance closing certain city-owned docks to public use during the Norfolk Harbor Fest 2014 celebration. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10. 
an ordinance establishing certain public areas and streets of the city of Norfolk as the festival area and setting forth the regulations applicable to such festival area for the Norfolk Harbor Fest 2014 celebration. Alton Robinson. This is turning into a circus. Good evening, Mayor Frame. My name is Alton Robinson. My address is 735 West 35th Street. And I am in support of this agenda item. I believe, like it is written, all regulations are written for the purpose of public safety and or protection of the park. And all regulations should be enforced to protect the public from officers who do not respect the law. I was here a few Tuesdays ago when a gentleman came here and spoke on a particular issue and I know it's ongoing and under investigation and no one can get into um, details. But from my understanding, the officer uh, charged the gentleman with um, assault on a law officer, obstruction of justice, and resisting arrest. And according to the testimony of the son at the last meeting, um, they were all false charges. And if or since they were false charges, that would mean that the officers has uh, committed a crime. And just like citizens in our city who commit crimes, they either go to jail. And oftentimes, officers, when they do something to break the law, it is as if nothing happens to them. Well, in this incident, I hope that something does happen so that it could begin to send a message to all the other officers who are on our wonderful police force that may want to believe that they can break the law and get away with it. Um, I would have a question that I would ask would be, how come or will the officers be charged with um, state code 18.2-434, which is perjury, if needs be? And also, would the officers be charged with state code 18.2-435, giving a uh, conflicting testimony? And also, that just like every citizen that commits a crime, they have to go through the uh, judicial process, that they be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, just like every other citizen in the city, so that we have an opportunity to weed out those officers who believe that they can come in communities and violate people's civil rights and break the law. So then the officers, which I know that there's a vast majority of officers who do not do that. Norfolk has some wonderful officers. I know plenty of them. Um, excuse me? Part 10. This is about the Harbor Fest celebration. Yeah, I did mention it says all regulations are written for the purpose of public safety and protection of the park. That was in the agenda item. Do you remember I said that in the beginning? Thank you. Our, okay. You oh, cut across oh. me. It took my little few seconds. Sure did. Go ahead. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 11? An ordinance approving a right of entry agreement with S.B. Ballard Construction Company. Dispense with the charter. Dan Montague. Good evening again. Dan Montague, 4605 Crick Street here in the city. What does this exactly mean in legal terms? right of entry agreement with S.B. Ballard Construction Company. That mean that you're gonna approve them doing business with the city? If that's the case, then anybody that took one penny of them from, for campaign contributions, no matter who you are, should excuse yourself from the vote on this motion. Thank you. Okay. Roll the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? I, I just wanted to say um, thank you to Breck and the staff for clearing up the agenda items on the website. Um, all of the documents that council receives 
um, is available now on the website so you can actually read through beyond this little description and get all the same details that we get. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? I abstain. Mr. Frame? Aye. We are 13. 12, Mr. President. 12? Yes, sir. Um, R12 is an ordinance approving a right of entry agreement with Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. All right. R13. An ordinance authorizing and approving an interim agreement between the City of Norfolk, Norfolk Public Schools, and S.B. Ballard Construction Company under the Public Private Education Facilities and Infrastructure Act. Alton Robinson. Hey, Mayor Fairman, my name is Alton Robinson. I just something to divide with this. Uh, I'm here to speak on this agenda item, and I'm talking real fast so you won't take any of my time. No, that was a joke. SB ballot on the agenda item several times today. SB ballot, high campaign contributor. And I'm, I'm speaking on this because I want it to be uh, in public record because I don't think it's right that um, they would have a pre-agreement. And I'm, and I'm not no attorney, but I normally just make an agreement. I don't make an agreement to make an agreement. So that makes you really not understand and also, like Tommy just spoke on, I do uh, want to thank whoever is responsible for putting all this um, information on the internet. And a lot of them are like eight and nine pages long. It's a lot to read. But I did not read all of this. I just read SB Ballot. And then I began to check VPAP. And when I checked VPAP, the, I saw that... Um, SB Ballot was a contributor to many of our uh, council members' campaign. And I think that, uh, like Mr. Monty, who said that no one on council who received donations from this company should be voting on anything to give this company anything because it appears to be corrupt. Whether it's corrupt or not, those in God know. But it's a conspiracy theory floating around in the city concerning this matter. And I think it should not be. I think that um, you should not vote if SB Ballot has given you any money from 2014 election all the way back to 2012, all the way back to when you first began to sit on council, whoever you may be. And you all know who you are. It's out there in the internet, it's public information, and it is not right. I believe it's not right, and I know that you all know it's not right. It's not right to the public. It's not right to the taxpayers. When people give you money, they should not reap a benefit. Because if that's so, I've given this city money, and I would like to reap a large benefit too. Thank you. Dan Montague. Dan Montague, 4605 Crick Street here in the city. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what I used to do for a living. I used to overhaul oil refineries as part of my trade. This city is determined to build some schools, okay? And the last uh, two out of the three, I hadn't, I hadn't been to the third one yet, but the last two have been pieces of junk. You can go in Norview High School and look to the uh, left in the uh, auditorium, crack, floor to ceiling. Nothing lines up. Nothing is plumb in that building. And therefore, that building will not last as long as its previous, uh, well, its predecessor. And the thing about it is we are buying junk in the city. I don't care whether it's roads, curbs, sidewalks, whatever, we buy junk because nobody inspects it or knows how to inspect it. Over at the fitness center, they had 
that much concrete in a six inch pipe. They had over half of the pipe loaded with concrete because the inspector didn't do his job. Now we go build all these schools and like I say, you're gonna see them fall down. Not me, but you will. <laughs> and the thing about it is, we have got to start tightening up when we start doing business with these contractors for the simple reason is they're getting away with too much. I guarantee you I can take any one of you into Norview High School or Coleman Place Elementary School and point out flaw after flaw after flaw. I mean, it is so simple. And, and I, as you see, I wear bifocals. And it is so simple to find it. And if I can find it, how come the inspectors in the city can't find it? But yet, you do anything in your neighborhood, they'll come out, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know. But yet, we let the contractors that do business with the city get away with absolute murder. And the thing is, we have got to tighten them up. And I don't care who builds, I don't like S.B. Ballard building the schools, for, but you know, because like I say, this is leading down the road of privatizing the schools. But the thing about it is, you guys are determined to do it. And if you're going to build them, then build them right. Thank you. Bruce Williams. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Bear. Honorable Council, Mr. Manager. Last year, the Hampton Roads Committee, uh, excuse me, Bruce Williams, Hampton Roads Committee of 200 plus men, Economic Justice Chair, 1068 Meadow Grove Trail, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Last year, the Hampton Roads Committee of 200 plus men urged this body to enact legislation to authorize a disparity study of the city's procurement process. Studies have been conducted by the city of Hampton and the city of Portsmouth providing an opportunity for cost saving in terms of our key activities associated with such a study. Since that time, the Minority Business Council of Virginia Beach has requested the City Council also conduct a disparity study. Research of the construction expenditures for the Norfolk Court Complex indicates that 4% of the $122 million that was spent was spent with women business enterprises. And of that, four of those enterprises were in Hampton Roads, the other two were out of state. 7% was spent with one minority business enterprise who resides in Richmond. You are now committed to an, a similar amount of five dollars for five schools in the city of Norfolk. Without the current disparity study conducted in the city, the council needs to be very careful accepting any proposal that lacks specified goals for women-owned and minority-owned business enterprises. A blanket slam goal, as indicated on page 30, item T, in the proposed ordinance that you will soon act is insufficient for any project of this magnitude in this city. Since 98% of the businesses in Virginia are small, not applying MWBE goals to this project would be a gross injustice to a large number of this city's taxpayers. The SB ballot proposal indicates a 50% SWAM participation. We strongly urge that you amend the language of this ordinance to state that at least 20% of that 50% goal shall be comprised of minority business enterprises and that at least 10% shall be comprised of women-owned business enterprises. We believe these modifications are in keeping with your designation as an all-American city, one that embraces an opportunity for all. We also urge you to include in your fiscal 2014-2015 fiscal budget funds to conduct a third-party disparity study and consult with Hampton and, and Portsmouth on ways to reduce the cost using data on market availability already acquired. To help expedite the process, we have provided you with sample language for such an ordinance. I thank you for your opportunity. And by the way, this Saturday, we'll be honoring African-American male who have achieved 3.0 or better many of them from the city of Norfolk, and I think one or two of them are Kate scholars. But in order for those young men to come back to their home and put their expertise and their money and their time and effort into our community, we have to have an economic ecosystem that will support them. That's why this is important to Hampton Roads Committee of 200 plus men. And we urge you to take these measures to see that that happens for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm open for any questions, by the way, on any of the data I just gave you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Call.
call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Staying. Mr. Frame? Aye. R14. An ordinance to schedule a city council meeting on Tuesday, May 20, 2014 at 7 p.m. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? If I could ask real quick, are we going to have a 5 o'clock session also? Paul. Um, we probably will st we'll start about 5:30. Okay, if, if that's okay, I'm not aware of any other. I know this is a new meeting. We had we don't actually have to have the meeting except to vote on the budget. But if we come in at 5:30 and we can eat, we can do council concerns. If there are any other follow up questions on the budget, then we can deal with them right there. Thank you. And a, and a Thank riveting you. presentation on stop signs. And another stop <laughs> sign presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. If that's going to be at 5:30, I'm okay. coming in at six. <laughs> Okay. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? And you know, I feel like we had a lot of kind of outstanding issues about the budget. And, and you think 5.30 is early now? Well, we're going to vote on the budget that night. I know, but, scheduled, but he's, going to, he's going to, according to what our discussion was uh, at the, I thought he got pretty good directions about um, spending on schools okay. and spending on the retirees program. All right. If you could give that to us maybe sooner than Friday though so we could have or well okay Friday we'll talk to you on Monday okay aye Ms. I'll probably come at 6 and then you'll all be laughing at me Ms. Williams aye Mr. Wynn aye Mr. Frame aye R15 an ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to Rico Corporation in the amount of $38,495.45 based upon the overpayment of business personal property tax for 2013 Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Green? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. It's all him, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda.